Wednesday, October 10, Schism in Corinth. Unfortunately, the issue of disunity among God's people didn't end even in New Testament times. For example, the first four chapters of Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians are an appeal for unity. While in Ephesus, Paul heard that various divisions had erupted in the church at Corinth. Thus, he begins his letter with a lengthy address on church unity and the need to avoid schism. Paul is concerned about this development and he seeks to provide inspired counsel to remedy this unfortunate situation. Question. According to 1 Corinthians 1, verses 10 through to 17, what seems to have been the cause of disunity, of their divisions and quarrels? 1 Corinthians 1, beginning at verse 10, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Paulus, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I had baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Paul became concerned for his brothers and sisters in Corinth when someone from Chloe's people told him about the divisions and quarrels among them. His opening words show the depth of his concern. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10 Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. His solution was to remind them that, as Christians, they were to be joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Whatever exactly was causing this contention and division, Paul wanted it stopped. Paul reminds the Corinthians that Christians are called to follow Christ, not a human being, however talented or gifted or called that person may be. While they seem to have divided themselves along party lines, the Apostle stated unequivocally that such divisiveness was not according to Christ's will. He asserted that Christian unity is centred on Christ and his sacrifice on the cross in verse 13. Christian unity finds its source in the truth as it is found in Jesus Christ and Him crucified, and in no one else, no matter how worthy a mentor or preacher or leader that person might be. At the foot of the cross, we are all on the same level ground. Our baptism is into Jesus, who alone can cleanse us from sin. However, we must work toward this unity in Christ in practical ways. What this should say to us is that, as Seventh-day Adventists, we cannot take for granted our unity of faith and mission. Divisions and quarrels can undermine the unity of the Church today, unless the love of the Lordship of Christ unites us to Him. And so to finish today, how can we learn to avoid the kind of dangers that Paul was dealing with here? Why must we always be careful about how much loyalty we give to any person other than Christ?